Hey guys, it's Merritt from SMB. One thing I'd like to start doing is taking time each week to talk a bit about futures markets and various tools that I use to be successful. Um, what I'll be doing this week and probably next week as well is taking a look at volume profiling. Um, it's a tool that I rely really heavily on to frame context of markets. And so let's jump into that. What we're going to be looking at today is the E-mini S&P 500 contract. So it's, it's you know, trades tick for tick about the same, exact same thing as the, the SPY ETF, for those of you that are more equities based. This is a futures contract. And I'm going to teach you about these volume profiles. So let's go ahead and hide the price data just to really hone in and focus on the the volume right now so most of you I'm sure are used to seeing you know the volume bars at the bottom of the chart on that on that x-axis that horizontal axis that says here's much how much volume was done for this amount of time you know or this you know if you're looking at a range bar for this range or whatever what this shows you is how much volume was done at each price okay and then you can divide that into time-based segments like I've done here as you can see July 10th through the 15th so these are weekly profiles each one of them is the Monday through Friday for the last last week S&P 500 here is where all of the the volume this is what actual participants where they traded the red area is is where they traded the most it's called the volume point of control or VPOC for short and then you can see we had these two tails here where there wasn't much volume and so what I end up using this as is really a support and resistance framework okay and that's what I'm gonna teach you about today so really what I look for is okay we have a, a profile it has kind of a complicated shape to it. You know, what are all these high volume areas and low volume areas? Really the way I see it is there were three main distributions last week. Three main volume nodes is another way to call it. Okay, so from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here really three main areas okay and so how do we use those areas well it's no different than a, a, a bar chart or whatever where you look these these areas are consolidation zones okay so let's go ahead and turn on the bars there we go and I'm going to actually extend these back to the left so we can see what they're derived from. Okay, so you can see that this was a consolidation area, then we broke higher, this was a consolidation area, we broke higher, and then consolidated into the end of the week. We had the, uh, the Turkey military coup scare, which drove us right down, you know, right to this volume point of control, which is another topic for another day, but that's very common. And what do we what do we have today? We have an, an overnight session that took us up and tagged the the upper end, the resistance area. We came down, consolidated, and then we come into the you know the pit session, the regular trading hours for the US. And what do we do? You know, this is a this is a nice little wedge looking pattern here, right? We 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 went down from there, but where are we? We are at the lower end of a, a support zone. Okay? What do we do? We trade right up to the other end. So generally expectations, uh, and this is not just volume profile specific, any type of trading, if you're trading inside a consolidation area, you expect that consolidation area to hold for the most part. Um, until it proves you otherwise. You, you want to be buying from the lower end of support. You want to be selling from the upper end of support. So one article I recently wrote about on the blog was that not all intraday setups are created equal. 
you need a higher time frame context, a structure to help you filter those setups. So for somebody that was looking at, at, at this pattern coming into the, the session today, you know, let, let's just call it something like this, you know, taking this breakdown short, it may have looked very nice and clean on your charts, but that was a, that was a low probability trade because this is at the, the support of, of this upper volume node from the prior week. It's not a high probability trade. So really, what made this long such a great play was that it did have a pattern that, that suckered in you know, shorts that did not have this higher time frame structure to be aware of, to know that the risk reward is not there for that trade. And you know you actually look for the failure and take the other side of that trade uh, across to the other end of that that volume node. Um, same way here, I guarantee you there was a lot of people that saw right here this break higher into the the close of the day. Um, you know when when volume picks back up and we can see some price expansion headed into highs of the the, the regular trading hours there were people buying this breakout but guess what exact same situation this is this is poor risk reward right here and it's a breakout failure and we revert right back um to what ultimately was vwap on the day and that was that so just today looking at the the main nodes from from last week we can have a context we can know where we want to be getting long, where we want to be getting short, where to actually pass on maybe some pattern-based entries that we would normally take because the risk-reward just isn't there based on this structure. So it's now Thursday at 2.50 p.m. Eastern, July 21st. And so what have we seen? Um, again, we've got the three distributions. We saw support from the bottom, resistance from the top. And this spike above pullback uh, to the most traded price and then new highs okay um, what do we see at this point we see just kind of it ranging here it takes a little peak above those highs fails where does it come to it comes to the the top of this this zone that we have from last week where the volume kind of drops off and we find some support there but then look at where it checks up right here kind of hard to see let me zoom in a touch this dotted line here is last week's high and uh, what do we see we see attempted push and now we can't even get back to those highs last week's high holds us that's a pretty good heads up you know you could even see this kind of flagging pattern here break down and uh, you know furthermore we see the push into this zone the pullback to retest the top of it and now we're working our way across it so that's where we're at right now and and volume from last week continues to be a a major reference and and tradable thing to develop a trade thesis uh, going forward and it's now thursday of this week i just wanted to add that trade smart what are you doing this friday at 1 30 p.m eastern if you're a trader and you're winding down the week, maybe things are a little bit slower around that lunchtime period, join me and Andrew Faldi uh, for trading conversations. We don't have a script. We literally just open up the floor and take questions from you guys, the SMB community, and answer it as best we can. It's kind of fun. We just loosen up and uh, talk about trading and wrap up the week. So join us at 1.30 each Friday.